the paradoxes of quantum mechanics can be explained without the need of parallel universes. In a new theory called quantum atom theory, the variable of time can explain these paradoxes. We know that time is a variable because we have time dilation when objects accelerate towards the speed of light. We also have gravitational time dilation around objects of great mass. The parallel universes of U Everett are here placed at right angles to each other, just as he said they would be. The only difference is they are individual space times within the one universe. To totally understand this, we have to first look at how time is formed and the part we play in its formation. In this theory, the emission and absorption of electromagnetic radiation from one atom to another creates the forward motion of time. Each individual atom of our universe creates its own space-time geometry relative to its position and momentum. Light moves in straight lines, but in three-dimensional space it will expand out in all directions, forming light spheres. The polarization of the light will be the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, creating quantum entanglement and the symmetry and geometry of space-time. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, all atoms radiate electromagnetic radiation continuously, even the atoms of an observer. The atoms bond together and then create their own space-time geometry and symmetry in unison. Each atom radi radiates out light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Each wavefront will create a probability of a future event. When a wavefront comes in contact with the electrons on the surface of another atom, it will create a new moment in time and space in the form of a photon-electron coupling. This has nothing to do with consciousness. All atoms create their own space-time geometry, but it is because life, in the form of an observer, can choose when and where to collapse the wave function that we have free will. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time, forming its own broken symmetry of its own evolutionary path. The forward momentum of light is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. To put this very simply, time moves at the speed of light and energy and mass slow it down to form their own space-time geometry. Therefore the observer will collapse the wave function creating his or her own independent reality of time and space. This is very difficult to visualize but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight Using the terminology of quantum mechanics, the wave-particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time geometry. The best way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. When the light reaches the screen with the two slits, the photons will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave-particle duality of the light creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will go through both slits. Interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments in time and an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. At that moment in time, the interference pattern disappears because to observe the photon, we have, a, have to physically create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wavefront into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time that the wavefront never had before the collapse. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling and in time, the interference pattern will reform just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. The symmetry and geometry of time is the key to understanding quantum mechanics. When we look down into an atom, we can see time-dependent quantum mechanics when the atoms bond together, forming their own space-time geometry. But when we zoom in, on an individual atom, we find time-independent quantum mechanics, and there is no flow or arrow of time, 
and all we have is probability. The probability of the uncertainty principle is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. It is because the atoms can distort the geometry of space-time that we have electromagnetic fields. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for electric fields, and time varying electric fields induce magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variation, the atoms themselves. The magnetic fields are always at right angles to the electric fields, forming the local space-time symmetry and geometry. The greater the angle in space, the greater the curvature of space-time. The stronger the electromagnetic field at that point in space, and at that moment in time. This can be seen as sparks of light associated with static electricity. The atoms will even distort the geometry of space-time, creating electrostatic discharge in the form of lightning. In this theory, it is only logical that the wonders of modern electronics are based on the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. This is because electric charge is quantized and we generate electrical power mainly by changing magnetic fields or moving a conductor through a magnetic field. This will distort the geometry of space and time, leading to the electromagnetic induction of our own created space-time, in other words, electricity. The curvature of space-time is formed because when the light or electromagnetic radiation comes in contact with another object, it will be totally absorbed proportionally to the masses of that object. This will create an unbalanced force and the two objects will resonate together in a process that we call gravity. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects. Therefore, every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. The gravitational field will propagate at the same speed that electromagnetic radiation moves, the speed of light, therefore there is no instantaneous action at a distance. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. There is no evidence of parallel universes but we see that the atoms form their own space-time geometry and symmetry. This is because the curvature of space-time has left something behind in the curvature of solid objects. There are no straight lines in nature, from the curvature of the moon, to the bough of a tree, to the growth rings of the tree itself. Everywhere we look, we can see within the diversity of nature the same common symmetry, the same guiding force. This can only be because of an underlying symmetry, and a continuous process of symmetry breaking. Everything is governed by the geometry and symmetry of space-time, from seashells to spiral galaxies, to the evolution of life itself. Even the observer has created their own space-time geometry. This can be seen as mirror or line symmetry in the physical shape of the observer. We will see and fill this line symmetry as the arrow of time, or as the timeline, pointing from the past into the future. Therefore the observer will feel time as only having one dimension, but in reality the observer is creating their own symmetry and geometry in three-dimensional space-time.